Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III encourages us to pray without ceasing throughout the day, every day, for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Good morning to you and welcome to another Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast. Today I would like to begin our broadcast as we always do with a poem on prayer. Pray Now is the title of this poem by Kathleen Higgum. And I want you to hold on because we're going to have a, a great time together here this morning. And uh, I pray and hope that this uh, short time together uh, will motivate you to pray like you've never prayed before and to pray with the confidence that God will hear your prayers and answer your prayers. In the moment of rage, I prayed. God helped me through somehow, for he has never failed me yet, draws me near when my knees bow. Pray now through the unthinkable, knowing his grace is sufficient. God understands our weakness. We were born, unfortunately, deficient. Fearful, naked, and screaming, but unto life more precious than gold. The Father God prepared the way for a heart he longs to mold. Pray now through the unthinkable. Do not meander until tomorrow or embrace this chaotic diversion, then bend to a weighty sorrow. Pour yourself out and surrender. In humility you feel his grace, not to do great things, no but to stand in a holy place where he will give you strength to overcome not quest questioning how fall down be filled with his glory then pray 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 right now uh, dear friends this morning our prayer motivated verse from the Word of God today. And by the way, the Word of God is still right and it is still strong no matter what's happening in our world. In James 4, 8, the Bible reads, Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. Make your move and God will make His. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Dave Early. He said, it is my conclusion and conviction that prayer is the timeless and often overlooked secret to high impact spiritual leadership. Our prayer motivator devotional today is titled, The Scriptures Teach Very Clearly That an Answer to Prayer is getting what you asked for. Uh, from my dear brother, Dr. John R. Rice, one of the uh, princes of prayer, Dr. Rice said, our modern way of thinking so indefinitely of prayer. I want to repeat that. Our modern way, our newfangled way of thinking so indefinitely of prayer and expecting nothing when we talk to God was not the way of Bible Christians and the Bible promises clearly 
teach us to expect God to give us just what we ask for when we pray aright. That is, when we pray uh, according to the scriptures. Now, according to the Bible, a genuine answer to prayer is simply getting what you asked for. See how clear this is in the scriptures. For example, Jesus said, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now in this scripture, if asking is prayer, then receiving is the answer to prayer. Amen, somebody. Don't have any doubt about it. Uh, just receive it. Just accept it. In these words of Jesus, if seeking, rather, if seeking is prayer, then finding is the answer to prayer. That ought to encourage you to pray. If knocking is prayer, then having the door opened to us is God's answer to prayer. Again in John 16, 24, Jesus said, Ask and ye shall receive. In John 16, 24, Jesus said, Ask and ye shall receive. Believe it. Here, if asking is prayer, then receiving is the answer to prayer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know that we are reading the Word of God to you, and some of you uh, have uh, bought into this modern way of thinking of prayer indefinitely. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, the person that you are listening to right now knows for a fact from wonderful experience down through the years of 30 years of ministry that God answers prayer definitely. For these past 30 years, most of those years being in full-time ministry with a family of nine and other many other responsibilities, uh, full-time ministry by faith, God has answered our prayers definitely. And God will answer your prayers. And I have not only my testimony, but the testimony of millions of others down through the years who have asked God for something specifically, and God answered their prayers specifically. Yes, even this in, in this economy, God can and will take care of his people. Now, I know I'm getting ready to offend some people right now. Some of you are going to tune me out, and I'm, I'm going to just, and never listen to me again, but that's all right. Uh, I hope you won't do that, but uh, I'm here to tell you, I do not believe God's people ought to be on food stamps. I have no problem with people getting help with medical things and so forth and so on. Uh, but I, I just do not believe the people of God ought to be on food stamps when God uh, promised them that he will provide for them their daily bread. Uh, to me, it is a slap in God's face. Uh, folks, as, as God's people, let's leave that for the people who need it, who are depending upon the government. We are not depending upon the government. We are depending upon God. Somebody ought to say amen right there. I thought I'd just throw that in for free. If knocking is prayer, then having the door open to us is God's answer to prayer. Again, in John sixteen twenty four, Jesus said, Ask and ye shall receive. Here, if asking is prayer, then receiving is the answer to prayer. In James 4, 2, we are told very boldly and very clearly that ye have not because ye ask not. If asking here is prayer, 
then God's word says that having is the answer to prayer. Dr. Charles A. Blanchard in his book Getting Things from God has helped me greatly on this matter. Dr. Rice said, Dr. Blanchard in his uh, chapter on what is an answer to prayer says very plainly, I have repeatedly heard beloved brethren say that when God declined to do the things which uh, his children desired, the answer was as real as when he granted the things which they desired. The statement uh, is sometimes made in this manner. God says sometimes yes and sometimes no. No is as really an answer as yes, so that prayer is always answered. It has ever seemed to me a cruel trifling with the souls of men to teach in this way. Dr. Blanchard went on to say, Of course, I do not mean to charge those who thus speak with intentional cruelty or trifling. Nevertheless, that which they do seems to me a heartbreaking piece of work. Then Dr. Blanchard gives the example of a mother who prays for the life of her child but not praying acceptably to God and the child dies. The example of a businessman in difficulty who prays but not according to God's will some might say and becomes a bankrupt person uh, his business in ruin. And the example of a man who is tempted, who prays for help but does not pray aright and so falls into shame. With his family broken up, the church embarrassed, and the neighborhood demoralized. To all of these, Dr. Blanchard says, some good ministers answer, Oh no, God has not refused your prayer. He has not failed to answer your prayer. He has just said no. And Dr. Blanchard says, I do not believe that this teaching is true. And I am sure it would not be a comfort to a mother whose heart lay cold and heavy under the shadow of the little uh, grave. I do not believe this teaching to be true. And I do not believe it to be a comfort or help to anybody. I think it would tend to make infidels rather than Christians. Then Dr. Blanchard goes on to say, An answer to prayer is a granting of the thing which a child asks of his Heavenly Father, according to the directions which his Father has clearly set down. If a saint prays for healing for himself, or his child, or his friend, and God answers his prayer, the sick person will be recovered. If a saint prays in scriptural fashion for relief from financial difficulties, he will be relieved. If he prays in scriptural fashion for victory over the powers of the devil and evil, he will obtain victory. An answer to prayer is a granting of the thing desired. Saying no to a request is not an answer to prayer in any real substantial meaning of the expression. When God answers prayer, he says, yes. And somebody ought to say, amen. And finally, Dr. Blanchard goes on to say, let me once more record my conviction that answered prayer is prayer which accomplishes the results desired. To say that the answer may be yes or no and that the latter is as really an answer as the former seems to me trifling with the sore hearts and the great needs of mankind. As Dr. Blanchard so well teaches, if the proper answer of prayer 
if the proper answer of prayer is a yes. A yes answer. And if a Christian who prays in a normal and scriptural manner should receive that for which he prays, then when a Christian does not get what he prays for, the Christian should begin to, to begin rather a thorough investigation. He knows that God is not wrong. He should set out to discover by the word of God and by the leading of the Holy Spirit why his prayer has not been accepted and answered. And this makes prayer a simple and understandable business and not a confused, convoluted business. And the way to full and blessed answers to prayer will soon be open to honest, surrendered, Bible-believing Christians who love the Lord. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to ask and to receive. Please remember, the announcer will provide the information for you uh, to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. Uh, for here, we do believe that when we ask for something specifically, God can and will give it to us specifically what we need and what we want. Not, be, not because we deserve it, but because of his mercy, his love, and his grace. Somebody ought to tap somebody and say amen. Holy Father God, we pray together today around the world in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are weak and feeble, but thou art strong. And Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love and grace. We individually confess our sins unto you, the sins of pride, sins of stubbornness, sins of rebelliousness, sins of all unrighteousness in our hearts, minds, souls, and spirits. Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins. Afresh and anew, please empty us, Lord, of ourselves and fill us with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, take each of us today in this radio family around the world and lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that you want us to go. Lord, we pray for every pastor who stands on your word, every church leader, every evangelist, every missionary, that you'll meet every need that they have, encourage their hearts, and Lord, grant them the backbone and the courage and the boldness and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach the gospel and to preach, thus saith the Lord. Lord, we pray that millions of souls will be saved today and throughout the uh, this week. Uh, we pray, Lord, also for all governmental leaders. We pray for the President of the United States. Uh, we pray for governmental leaders all around the world, uh, people facing things that, that they have never faced before. Give them wisdom, leadership, guidance, and direction. Holy Father God, as we continue in prayer, we pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests. We pray in faith, believing. We pray, Lord, uh, for Roxanne in New York. Uh, give uh, her family the financial breakthrough that they need in getting uh, the needed car that they uh, uh, want for their family, that they desire for their family, so that they can have better transportation. Holy Father God, we pray for <clears throat> Elizabeth. <clears throat> Bless her children with the work that they need, the jobs that they need. Lord, we have uh, many people who are struggling with student loans. We pray that you'd work a divine miracle to give them a job or help them to make a job to pay off those loans and to be relieved of those burdens. Lord, we pray for Sylvia in California. Please give her uh, the job that she needs and meet all of her needs. Help her 
uh, to pay her rent and her bills. And Lord, we pray for millions of families across the country and around the globe. Lord, who are suffering financially today, that you would miraculously provide for them the food to eat and clothes to wear and a place to stay. Holy Father God, we pray also for the following people who have uh, recently trusted you as Savior into their hearts. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them in the faith, strengthen them in the faith, help us to do our part in discipling them, and fill them with your Holy Spirit, help them to find a good Bible-believing local church, help them to continue to participate in the discipleship materials we have sent to them, and visiting the various churches online and being nourished and blessed by that. And Lord, we pray for these specifically. Uh, Adiban in Malaysia, Ellen in Mozambique, and Claudio in Indiana. Lord, we also pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have recommitted their lives to you, who have some call it uh, rededicated their lives to you, have come back to you. And Lord, this is a wonderful thing. And we rejoice with them in this decision. And we pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically for Anathonia in Nigeria, uh, Baal Kashan in India, and Christian in Nigeria. Uh, now, dear friend, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we pray for you who might be listening to this broadcast, and you do not know the Lord. We pray for your salvation as well. Uh, open, we pray that God would open your eyes and help you to see uh, your need for salvation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, and for his sake, amen. Uh, dear friend, I'm talking to you. You've been listening to our radio station for some time now, uh, but you have never been born again. If you want to be saved today, please understand with me that we are all sinners. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and therefore we deserve punishment. We deserve hell because of our sin. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, perish where? Perish in hell, but have everlasting life. The Bible makes it clear in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou, you, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, dear friend of mine, if you are willing to believe that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again, and you are willing to mean it from your heart, please pray with me this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner. I've done some wicked things in my life. Lord, you know all about it. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart right now and save my soul and change my life. I believe in you by faith. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you have accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, uh, we send out uh, thousands of, of uh, uh, tracts and, and, and pamphlets and booklets every day uh, online. And we have a booklet just for you, free of charge. We will, never, we will never ask you for a dime. We want to just give you this free. And all you would have to do is just email us. The name of the pamphlet is What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. 
This will help you get started in your Christian faith and life. Until next time, please remember, dear friend, pray, think, do. God bless you.